territorial boundaries do not define a culture. Even less so if these borders run across the sea and take in four islands with different features. However, we will attempt to explain why Mallorca, Menorca, Avisa, and Formentera make up an archipelago known as the Balearic Islands. Nevertheless, if you want to show respect for the people of the islands, don't talk to us about a Balearic identity, because we don't quite have one. Everybody identifies with the island where they happen to be born. Mallorca and Menorca are the two biggest islands and the furthest east. Together they make up what is properly known as the Balearic Islands, and their strategic position in the middle of the Mediterranean has made them the coveted object of battles, conquests, and jealousies. In the Balearic Islands, stones play a very important part. This love for stones cannot be understood without the Taliotic culture. The earliest constructions date back to the 3rd millennium BC, and most of them are for burial purposes. Later on, around 2000 BC, navetas, boat-shaped constructions for both the living and the dead, came along. After this, in the first millennium BC, the Taliots were built. These were monumental towers of stones, built up with foundations and intended for public use, for rituals, or something resembling political meetings. In Menorca alone, there are estimated to be between 300 and 350 archaeological sites dating from this culture, many of them very well preserved. This is why all these stones are on their way to becoming UNESCO World Heritage. But we should not forget Avisa and Formentera. They are known as the Pitiusic Islands. This name comes from the Greek Pitia, meaning pine tree. This tree, a symbol of the Mediterranean region, shelters Esclata sangs, bloody milk caps, a species of mushroom that around November becomes a center of social life for the islanders. Avisa was heavily settled by Phoenicians and Carthaginians, who left behind one of the most important collections of Punic relics yet found in the Mediterranean. The island's history has seen the passage of Western and Eastern Romans, Arabs, Catalans, and the Spanish Bourbon monarchy. Sieges, assaults, conquests, pirates, and phenomena like the so-called bandositats, noble families opposed over matters of honor paid bandits to take revenge. Menorca played in a different league, finding itself under British rule for nearly a century. Greetings. From 1708 to 1802, the British interest was strictly military to take advantage of the biggest natural harbor in Europe, in Mao, as a naval base. The British kept the Spanish Inquisition out, making the island a stronghold of Catalan language, with literary figures like Juan Ramis y Ramis. The British made their mark on architecture, building a road right across the island, and with the island's official drink, which is Shuri Gay Gin. Here in the Balearic Islands, we have a long tradition of creative design. In the late 19th century, small-scale industry arose, specializing in leather, shoes, furniture, jewelry, cotton, and other items. In the 30s, nearly 40% of the working population of the Balearic Islands made their living in the factories. It is therefore not surprising that the creations of names like Jelma Mascaro, Pons Quintana, and Patricia became internationally known, or that Abarcas and Porqueras, country people's shoes, became city footwear all over the world. Horses play a leading role in the popular festivities of San Juan, St. John, in an equestrian tradition that goes back to the 14th century and today attracts visitors from everywhere. Nor does Mallorca miss out. Whenever they get the chance, they dress up as demons to represent evil, especially on the occasion of the festivities of San Antoni, St. Anthony. Home cooking plays an important part in all these festivities and in island culture in general. Much of the island's culinary repertoire is characterized by its simplicity and by containing lard, like Mallorca's star dish, bread with sobrasada, a spicy meat paste. The other favorite food of the Balearic Islands is ensaimada, 
This is a bread made of sweet, fermented, and baked dough that has been filling people up since the 17th century. Panadas, coca royce, cocas am sofregit, coca, flatbread with tomato from Menorca, flaul, a cheesecake from Evisa. It's hard to go hungry on the islands, especially if you have sa baraneta, snack eaten between 5 and 8 o'clock, and there is no limit on what you can have. Our islands are filled with music and songs. These include the traditional work songs sung in the fields while threshing, plowing, milking, or gleaning. There are also other styles like fandangos, boleros, and jotas that have inspired traditional dances. On Mallorca, we have the traditional baile de bot, and people still meet up to dance in the town square with a group of musicians. One of the voices that best evokes the sound of the Balearic Islands is that of veteran singer Maria del Mar Bonet. In a career stretching over 50 years, she has explored the sounds of the islands, mixing them with others to become one of the greatest voices of the Mediterranean. The mixture of cultures that have passed down through the islands have left their marks. One of the communities that have made the strongest mark is that of the Shuetas, Mallorcan Jews forced to convert to Christianity, but who clung to their own clandestine identity for centuries, despite anti-Semitic persecution. Today, they still treasure a great cultural tradition filled with poetry, novels, theater, and philosophy. All these traditions are connected to glossa, a kind of improvised oral poetry. <laughs> the so-called glosados, who were already well-known in the 19th century, were much-loved popular figures. One well-known glossida, is Biel Majoral. Glossa has always persisted on Menorca, while Evisa has opted for Cant Redoblat. Another Balearic tradition is that of Mallorcan rondallas the equivalent of other European traditional stories handed down orally from generation to generation and filled with talking animals and fantastic figures like giants, demons, and dragons. Eight hundred years ago, this was the birthplace of Ramon Llull. Ramon Llull was one of the first Europeans to switch from Latin to a vernacular language to write major works. He left over 30,000 pages in 200 works, among them Blanquerna, one of the most successful novels of the Middle Ages. In fact, the Lulian school was set up around his figure on the Miramar estate, one of the first language and translation academies in history. It taught Arabic, Catalan, and Latin. Ever since then, language has played a living, central role in the cultures of the Balearic Islands. With this in mind, Father Alcobé and Francesc de Borja Moll traveled around collecting words village by village to build up a dictionary recording the rich Catalan language vocabulary of Valencia, Catalonia, and the Balearic Islands. The islands have contributed to Catalan culture with large numbers of poets and a rich body of work, with names like Blay Bonet, Pau Badell, Jaume Pons Alorda, and Antonio Vicens. They form part of a large Balearic ecosystem of literary creativity, which includes many other voices, among them Maria Antonia Olive, Bartomeu Rosselló Porsal, Llorenç Villalonga, Josep Maria Llompart, Carme Riera, Miquel Ángel Riera, Miquel Bausa, and more. Returning to music, on our islands, traditional song merged with hippie counterculture to create names like Os Paranderos, Trajinada, and on Elisa, Uk. 
But the success of Mallorcan song did not come to an end in the 70s. In the late 90s, after the hits of Je Turiré, the group Antonia Font was formed, becoming a landmark in Catalan language indie pop. This healthy scene continues today with voices like Maria Jauma, Saim, Oliva Trancada, Da Souza, Clara Fiol, Jorra y Gamorra, or the electronic sounds of Juana Gomila. You can sample the highlights of Balearic cultures at festivals like Pedra Viva on Menorca, where a former quarry becomes a cultural landmark on the island every summer. The festival Aima, Atlantida Film Fest, and Festival Internacional de Cinema de Menorca are other showcases around the islands to act as cultural hubs within a growing network. There's Mallorca Live, Jazz Voyeur, Jazz de Sa Pobla. This is Maria Antonia Olive, one of the top choreographers on the Balearic dance scene. Catalina Carrasco's Bal Company is a trailblazer in dealing with gender, feminism, and transfeminism on stage. And this is Eulalia Bergada, who explores the intangibles of dance in ephemeral performances. This rich scene exists thanks to creative spaces like the Centra de Investigación Escénica, which explores the world of creative circus. This is Miquel Barceló one of the most acclaimed visual artists on the islands, and a global figure in outsider art and neo-expressionism. His works can be seen in places like the Santissime Chapel of the Cathedral in Palma, or on the ceiling of the Palace of Nations in Geneva, seat of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Illustrious figures from many places have passed through the islands. Mallorca had already been celebrated by famous figures like novelist George Sand and her lover, Frédéric Chopin. Islands that have inspired artists and writers from everywhere. Palma was the home of English poet and writer Robert Graves for 45 years. Mallorca captivated Jorge Luis Borges in the 20s, and Juan Miró, grandson of an island family and married to a Mallorcan, who moved there in the 50s and built his studio. A pioneer of wealthy tourism was Archduke Luis Salvador of Austria, he acquired many estates and possessions in the Tramuntana Mountains, laying out the main hiking routes in the range. He wrote the legendary atlas Die Balearen. This well-heeled tourism led to legendary places like the Hotel Formentor, which hosted cultural events like the Week of Wisdom. More recently, visitor numbers have risen considerably, in some cases excessively, due to a growing tourist industry. Within a few years, thousands of European tourists began to arrive on Mallorca, and this holiday trade spread to Menorca a few years later. On Ibiza, tourism took off later, and very suddenly, causing a major culture shock for what was actually a very poor island. This is why even now, the tourism of luxury yachts and world-famous discotheques coexist with a parallel reality. Local women who still wear traditional country clothing. As you can imagine, this tourist boom has had an irreversible impact on the place and on the imagination of the islanders. The damage to Mallorca and Ibiza is irreparable, while Menorca is the island that has remained the most unspoilt, partly thanks to its own industrial fabric of shoemakers and jewelry makers, partly because much of the land belonged to big landowners and aristocrats who had no need to sell it, and partly thanks to the activism of an important grassroots environmental movement in the 70s, which crystallized in the GOB, the Balearic Orthonology Group. An NGO that halted major speculative projects that would have caused environmental disasters. They are still working today to save sea turtles and collect microplastics. They care for the native flora and fauna, which includes 124 endemic plant species and more than 300 endemic animal species, such as Lilford's wall lizard and, and Mamora's warbler.
Just because it's hard to talk about a single Balearic culture or identity does not mean there is no culture. In fact, there are extremely rich cultures to explore, connecting the present day to a history going back thousands and thousands of years.